France has just done something that militaries almost never do unless they are sending a message. On December 22, 2025, Thales announced a successful live fire of the next generation SAM PTNG configuration at the DGA missile test range in Biscaros, validating the new engagement module together with Thales' new ground fire radar. Deliveries are scheduled to begin in 2026 for France and Italy, and Paris is already floating a far more provocative idea that the first operational deployment should happen in Ukraine, not at home, not at a NATO exercise, but under the most demanding air defense environment on the continent. So pause and ask the obvious question. Why would France want a brand new strategic level air defense system to meet real enemy missiles before it has even fully matured in peacetime service? because Ukraine has become the laboratory that no European planner can ignore. It is where cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, glide bombs, drones, decoys, electronic warfare, and saturation raids collide every single week. If you can survive that, you can survive almost anything. And if you can prove it there, you are not just supporting Kyiv. You are shaping the future market and the future doctrine of European air defense. SMP TNG is not designed to babysit trenches. It is a mobile medium to long range system meant to defend cities, air bases, industrial nodes, command centers, and energy infrastructure. In practical terms, it is the kind of layer that decides whether a country can keep flying fighters, keep repairing power grids, and keep government and military leadership functioning while an adversary tries to overwhelm the rear. The architecture matters here. A modernized engagement module is the brain. It fuses tracks, assigns missiles, manages timing, and plugs into a broader air picture. Then you have launchers, typically vertical, carrying Aster family interceptors. The exact battery layout can vary, but the logic remains the same. Enough ready missiles, enough radar performance, and enough networking to survive the first wave and still have teeth for the second. Now, the real headline in the NG variant is not a slightly better missile. It is the sensor and the way the sensor changes the geometry of the fight. Groundfire is a fully digital AESA radar designed for integrated air and ballistic missile defense, advertised with hemispherical coverage. 360 degrees in azimuth and up to 90 degrees in elevation with an instrumental range quoted up to 400 kilometers. That combination is not just a spec sheet flex, it is a statement about the threat Ukraine faces daily. Shaheds and other drones exploit clutter and low altitude. Cruise missiles use terrain masking, tactical aircraft and standoff weapons try to stay outside engagement zones. Ballistic missiles compress timelines to minutes. If your radar has blind arcs, slow refresh, or needs to reorient to see a new sector, the attacker gets to choose the angle, the timing, and the saturation pattern. With true all-round coverage, the defender starts taking that choice away. And notice what Thales did before the big live fire headline. The company announced in 2025 that ground fire had moved into continuous series production. That detail is easy to miss, but it is the difference between a promising prototype and a system that can actually arrive in meaningful numbers. Everyone in Europe talks about industrial ramp-up. Very few programs show you the industrial conveyor belt before the first combat deployment. When you hear 20, 26 in the same breath as series production and successful qualification shots, that is when concept becomes planning assumption. What about the interceptor? The Aster family's signature is endgame agility, using a combination of aerodynamic control and lateral thrust for violent terminal maneuvers. That matters because modern threats do not fly politely. Ballistic targets come in steep. Cruise missiles can jink. Some weapons weave, pop up, dive, or present awkward angles intended to break the defender's intercept solution. The SAMP-T ecosystem is also explicitly built with ballistic missile defense in mind as a core mission rather than a bolt-on afterthought. And the NG roadmap is associated with improved Aster variants intended to better handle that class of target. In Ukraine's reality, that is not theoretical. The difference between air defense and missile defense is the difference between losing a transformer yard and losing an entire regional grid between a crater and a cascade. So how would Ukraine actually use SAMP TNG if it arrives? Not as a trophy system parked where Russian reconnaissance can film it. The smart play is depth and integration. You place it where it can protect high value assets and just as importantly, contribute to the national sensor picture. A wide area, high quality radar does not only shoot down targets, it cues other shooters, it improves fighter intercepts, it helps shorter range systems conserve missiles by engaging the right threats at the right time. In a layered network, the most valuable weapon is often not the launcher at all, but the ability to see early, classify correctly, and hand off targets efficiently so you do not waste your most expensive interceptors on decoys while the real missiles slip through.
Mobility is the other piece people underestimate until they watch an air defense duel in real time. The era of turn it on and leave it is dead. Anti-radiation missiles, space-based ISR, long-range drones, and pattern analysis punish predictability. Survivability now comes from discipline, emitting when necessary, relocating when possible, and forcing the attacker to spend time and weapons rediscovering you. Large area air defense has historically been more static than artillery, but Ukraine has shown that even strategic systems need a shoot and scoot mindset. If SAM PTNG can fire, displace, and reappear elsewhere without breaking the integrated picture, it complicates Russia's suppression campaign in a way that purely static defenses cannot. And yes, the comparison everyone will make is Patriot, because Patriot is the combat proven benchmark, deeply integrated in NATO logistics and already in Ukrainian service. Patriot has been effective, but its legacy radar architecture has traditionally been sector-based, meaning coverage and engagement geometry are shaped by where the radar is pointed and how the battery is oriented. Western upgrades and next-generation radars are changing that in the long term, but Ukraine is fighting with what exists now, not what will exist after a decade of procurement cycles. In that context, an all-round modern radar paired with a European missile defense capable interceptor is not better than Patriot as a slogan. It is different in a way that could be operationally decisive under saturation pressure because it changes how many angles the defender must fear at once. So why is France speaking so openly about Ukraine and SAM PTNG? Because this is strategy layered on top of engineering. Paris is rearming and modernizing, and it has an incentive to validate a European alternative in the harshest conditions, not only to help Ukraine, but to prove Europe can field a top-tier layer without defaulting to American systems for every mission. At the same time, it sends a signal to Moscow that Europe is not merely donating leftovers. It is willing to insert its most advanced defensive technology into the fight and learn faster than Russia can adapt. And then there is the long arc. In November 2025, Ukraine and France announced a long-term defense framework that explicitly mentions a 10-year horizon and the potential for Ukraine to procure major capabilities, including eight SAMPIT air defense systems with six launchers each, alongside radars and munitions. Whether every line of that plan becomes hardware on the ground will depend on production, funding, training, and battlefield priorities, but the direction is clear. This is not a one-off delivery. It is an attempt to anchor Ukraine inside a European air defense ecosystem for the long haul. Which brings us back to the uncomfortable revealing point. Ukraine is no longer just a recipient of weapons. It is the environment that decides which designs survive contact with the modern threat stack. If Sampa TNG shows up in 2026 and performs under pressure, it will not only harden Ukraine's strategic rear, it will become a reference point for every European capital asking what the next decade of air defense should look like and if it struggles, that lesson will be just as valuable because it will be learned early in the only place where the future is already happening. So when you hear France talk about debuting a next generation shield in Ukraine, do not treat it like a headline about generosity, treat it like a headline about adaptation. Europe is watching the war and rewriting its own air defense assumptions in real time. The question is not whether Ukraine needs another system. The question is whether Europe is ready to accept what Ukraine is teaching. That the winner is not the one with a single best battery, but the one with resilient layers, deep magazines, survivable sensors, and a network that can absorb the first Udar and still fight the second. If Sampa TNG is built for that world, then sending it to Ukraine is not reckless. It is the most brutally honest test Europe can run.